Buying a double bass is an expensive decision, even if you're looking for a beginner instrument and getting it wrong can really be frustrating. So if you're looking to learn about different categories of double basses, what to look for when you're buying a double bass and other important information, this video is for you. First off, there are great double basses in every price category with one exception, and I'll get to that later in the video. But whether you're starting out and you're looking for a laminated base, a plywood base, or you're looking for something like I'm holding, which is a professional model base, or you're looking for something beautiful and vintage, like a wonderful work of art from hundreds of years ago, there are great bases and not so great bases in all of those categories. Your beginner bases, your student bases, Bases, your first bases, those are going to be laminate bases by and large. And so that means plywood, that means a laminated top, that means laminated ribs, that means laminated back. And they have some advantages actually. They are very sturdy. So if you are a rockabilly bass player and you're standing on your bass, which I, I have never done and would not recommend, but people do it, those are going to be laminate bases. If you are going to be playing in blister heat and freezing cold and all sorts of different conditions, laminated bases are going to be a great thing. They are not going to resonate as much as a hybrid base, which we'll get into, or certainly a fully carved base. But if they are set up well and they're built well and they're maintained well, they can sound very good for what the purpose is. And that's the main question is like, what are you looking to do? If you're just starting out, you don't need this vintage, super expensive, fine wine kind of sound. You just need something to get your fingers moving and to understand pitch and rhythm and bowing and pizzicato and all that kind of stuff. And there are some beloved laminated models out there like K basses. I had a K for years and years and people actually seek these out. Also, if you are playing amplified mostly, it doesn't quite matter so much that it's laminated because the bass itself is just part of a chain of signals. You have the bass, you have the pickup, you have the amplifier. And so that's going to have an impact too. I did an interview with the wonderful Arnold Schnitzer who wrote the handy double bassist. We've got that available in our sheet music store. I will link up to that. And Arnold has an entire chapter on how to maintain and care for laminated bases. So if you are looking for a laminated base or have a laminated base, definitely check out that chapter. It's going to be super helpful. The next type of bass, if we're talking about quality and tone, is going to be a hybrid bass. And it's what it sounds like. If you think of a Prius, that's a hybrid car. What is it? It has electric and gas. So a hybrid bass is going to have some combination of laminated and fully carved woods. Now, once you start to actually take the piece of wood and carve it painstakingly, and we, we've talked with luthiers endlessly on the podcast, so if you want to learn about the minutia of this fascinating career, I will link up to all sorts of resources on that. Carving allows the wood to resonate. It allows you to really optimize the thickness in different parts and just really use the science of, of instrument building to create an optimal resonating instrument. The cool thing with hybrid bass is you will get a long way toward having a fully carved sound just by getting a carved top. One of the more common ones is to have still a laminated back, plywood back, laminated ribs, so plywood, back and ribs, but to have a carved top. And this will have a dramatic impact on the tone of the bass. So as soon as you get that carved top, you're going to get this much fuller, thicker, deeper, more complicated sound, particularly, I think, with the bow, although pizzicato too, you, know, you will notice an impact uh, regardless. You're going to get a little bit more character to the sound. You're going to get a little bit more complexity. You're going to have a little more uh, dynamic range often, although there are many factors that go into the quality of the sound of a bass. But getting some carved wood in there is going to help a lot. There is also another type of hybrid bass that you'll see with a carved top and a carved back, but still having laminate ribs. That is going to be very close in tone to a fully carved bass, but it's going to come in at a cheaper price point because it's just uh, not as much painstaking carving. I've had conversations with luthiers that really think that you could put a hybrid base with carved top, carved back, laminate ribs into a base competition, you'd have a good chance of winning. It, it can be that close. Now, 
Hybrid basses can really, really be the perfect basses, even for professionals, depending on the type of playing you're doing. If you are traveling a lot in different climates, if you're a touring musician, hybrid basses are going to have that sweet spot where you have a little bit more character to the sound with the carved top. Let's just say we have a carved top, but with laminate back and ribs, you're going to have a little bit more stability to the instrument. So we're always trading off stability and tone. The more complex and, and beautiful the sound, the thinner the wood is going to be generally. And so that also makes that wood a little bit more prone to temperature fluctuations. So if you live in Minnesota or Nevada or somewhere with just a little bit more extreme temperatures, uh, you may want to consider that. We're also going up in price here. So laminated is going to be the cheapest by and large. And then hybrid bases are going to come in next. Once you get into fully carved territory, you are playing on what most professionals play on. So this is a fully carved bass. This is by a wonderful luthier who passed away a few years ago named Albert Jackstat. This bass uh, retails probably for $25,000, but you can get a fully carved bass for $6,000, $5,000 even maybe. But having that fully carved wood, now you're getting everything resonating and that's just going to, all things being equal, be a, a more interesting sound, more varied sound, more complex sound, vintage sound. We're going from uh, two buck Chuck Trader Joe's wine to something uh, much finer vintage, something from Sonoma or Napa County. I live here in, in California, so lots of wine analogies in my world. Though you can find fully carved bases that are half size or even quarter size, that's incredibly rare, I would not recommend buying a fully carved half size or quarter size base. By the way, I would not recommend buying a base at all until you get to three quarter size, adult size. I think a lot of parents, and if you're a parent watching this, you rock. Thanks for being a bass player parent. I think a lot of parents do not like the idea of renting, of, of renting something, they just want to own it. Folks, you do not want to own a student half-size base. It's just not an asset that will appreciate. You are much better off going to a local music shop and renting that base until you get to be a teenager in high school and you're actually big enough to play on what you think of as an adult size base. So let's talk about the size of base. And this is going to be true for laminate bases, this is going to be true for hybrid bases and for fully carved bases. What size base do you want or do you need? And that's a good question. And welcome to the world of double bass, this confusing Wild West world. It is a wonderful world, but a confusing world. I do many talks <laughs> and I'm sure we'll do many more about demystifying the double bass. So first of all, the quote unquote full size bass that, that most people play on is actually a three quarter size bass. What does three quarter size mean? It really doesn't mean anything exactly because bass is so non-standardized. So you will find bases of various shapes and string lengths that are considered three quarter size bases. And this is definitely a complicated topic, especially for a, a player, a non-luthier to do in a video. I will link up to the best resources that I have available, but just, just know that three quarter size bases are what we're talking about when we're talking about adult size bases. But if you ever watch any of the videos on this channel, you have never even seen a three quarter size bass in these videos because this jack set is a seven eighth size bass. Now, what does that mean? It means bigger than three quarter. And that could mean that uh, the, the ribs are deeper or the top is wider or the base is taller or some combination of things. And in, in the case of this jack stat, most of the 7 8 the the bigger dimensions, are down in the lower bout of the instrument. That's a really cool place to have some extra dimension because the resonating cavity of the bass is bigger. But this dimension, the more crucial dimension for getting around the bass, is not so big. So this bass, though it is a big old bass, it is actually fairly easy to navigate and it has a 41 and a half inch string length. That is a quite standard, there is no standard, sadly for bass, but that has kind of become the standard or a common string length that adults play on. So three quarter size bass, great. Seven eighth size bass, if you want something a little bigger, great. And then another size that we're seeing more and more frequently that adults are playing are five eighths 
basis. And I did a video for the company I work for, Eastman Music, uh, demoing the 5 8 size bass that they just came out with and the 7 8 size bass that they came out with. It's a Busan pattern. So if you want to see how different those really are in terms of size, check that out. You also have different patterns. It's like we have these corners right here. We call these violin corners. This bass has violin corners. You see a lot of basses that have just these more plain corners. Those are called gamba corners. We have basses that have little poofs down here. Those are called busetto corners. And then we have flat backs. We have round backs. What's the difference? What's the difference in tone? What's the difference in playability? It all has an impact, but the main thing is what's comfortable for you. And the only way you're going to be able to find that out is if you actually get your hands on a bass and try it out. So that brings us to the next big topic here. Where do you look for a bass? Where to get started? Well, where I would not start is eBay or some sort of internet marketplace like that. I get so many emails. I just answered one uh, yesterday. I want to buy a double bass and I'm looking on eBay and I have $800. Okay, my answer to that is no, <laughs> do not buy a cheap bass off of eBay. You will be getting some hunk of junk and it will probably be what I would call a bass shaped object. This object, very likely will have massive problems that you cannot determine from just a photo on eBay. And you will then need to take this base into somewhere to get it worked on. This will cost you almost certainly way more than the base is worth. It may have problems that are unresolvable. It may need a new fingerboard, but the new fingerboard is going to be more than what you paid for the base. It may just be like structurally impossible. And so I would just stay away from internet marketplaces. Now that's not to say that the internet's not a great resource for looking for bases. It absolutely is. And I would highly recommend going to a place like Upton Base, who has built their business model selling bases online, but they have a retail shop. They've been doing this for years years and years and years. And so that's a very different thing from just like looking at random bases on eBay. And if you look at the prices that are being charged by Upton or by any of the other base shops that I'll talk about later in this video, that will give you a sense of what bases cost. And it's not $500. The next place that you can look is a local music store. And you are going to, depending on where you live, of course, you're going to find some places that don't really deal with bases that much, but they could order one for you and you might find some local music stores that are really well versed in basses. They may have a string specialist in your area and if you get here in the United States at least, if you get to towns of 50,000 or more, you're probably going to have a local music store that at least knows something about basses and they can be a very good resource. But the place I would start with, even if you don't end up buying a bass from them is the specialty bass shops. There are many here in the United States and globally. I'm going to put together a list or perhaps a map uh, and that will be linked to in the description below. If you know of a shop that should be on that list, please let me know. Uh, there are new people coming and going all the time. And I did this wonderful conversation with 26 of luthiers, predominantly from the United States, but a few from other areas as well. And those people are such great resources to ask about bases, to ask about what's in stock, to ask about where to look. A lot of these people run their own base shops or are affiliated with base shops. So check that out and just finding a base shop, even if you have to drive four or five hours, make a weekend trip of it, you will learn so much about what's out there in the market and what to look for, what you can afford and what really speaks to you because you're just not going to know if this bass vibes with you, vibes with your body, vibes with what you're trying to do, uh, is set up in a way that you want, you're gonna learn a lot about setup just by playing a bass. A good setup will make or break a bass. I will take a plywood bass that is set up optimally any day any day, probably for just about any musical situation, over a, a fully carved bass, beautiful bass that is not set up well. I would rather have something that 
plays well and sounds as good as it can over something that is set up poorly. You're just going to have nothing but misery with a bad setup. And local base shops are going to be the best places for a setup. If you don't have one close to you, looking into music shops that do know a bit about bass is the next option. But you might also ask like, what about these things you got on your bass, like these extensions and all these accessories? If you want to learn more about that, check out this video we've got linked up and we'll see you in the next one.